From what I'm hearing, uh, we hear them both talking about maintaining our strong military or growing that military. This is a military that's now six times the size of the next biggest spender, which is as large as the next some many dozens of countries, their defense budgets all put together. This is a military budget that has doubled in size since the year 2000, but it's clear we we are not twice as secure for having doubled the military budget. If anything, we are less secure for draining a trillion dollars a year from our budget here at home. And uh, we could cut that military budget in half and still be three times the size of the next biggest spender. And yes, we absolutely must strengthen our economy here at home. This is where our true national security lies. With one out of every two Americans in poverty or low income heading for poverty, with 36 million students and recent graduates effectively indentured servants who are trapped in these high unforgiving uh, debts with a 50% unemployment rate, uh, we have an economic emergency here at home. And fortunately, we can solve this. We can solve the economic emergency at the same time that we make wars for oil obsolete and at the same time that we put a halt to climate change. That's why my campaign and the Green Party are calling for a Green New Deal now, an emergency program that actually puts our dollars, including hundreds of billions of our war dollars, into actually creating true security here at home. It's based on the New Deal. In the New Deal that got us out of the Great Depression, we created four million jobs in the first two months. There is no excuse for us to be sitting here with the economy continuing to be in a tailspin. When Barack Obama talks about the jobs that are coming back, first, there is no insourcing. That is a public relations uh, trick. Those jobs are not coming back. And in fact, the free trade agreements, which he is continuing to negotiate, which Mitt Romney will likewise push, in fact, keep sending our jobs overseas and will continue to do that and undermine our wages here at home. So we need to say no to this expanding war for oil, this attack on working people here in America, and instead say yes to a Green New Deal that will solve the climate emergency, the economic emergency, and put a halt to these wars for oil. Rocky Anderson. The question was, what is our role in the world? Look at the role we played at the Nuremberg Tribunal following World War II. Justice Robert Jackson, Jackson of the United States Supreme Court, in his opening statement at Nuremberg, pointed out that there were people being prosecuted there, and they ultimately were convicted, people being prosecuted for engaging in wars of aggression. And war of aggression is simply attacking and trying to occupy or occupying a nation that has not attacked you or is not imminently about to attack your country. And he said, these people are being prosecuted here today, but if these international prohibitions against wars of aggression are to have any meaning at all, they must be applied against every other nation in the future, including those sitting in judgment of aggressor Germany. No higher duty of any nation than to comply with that prohibition. And at the time, there was one treaty, the Kellogg-Briand Pact. Since then, the United Nations Charter absolutely prohibits wars of aggression. And we have violated that time and time again, as well as violating our own war power clause under the United States Constitution. Our role in the world is to abide by our other sacred treaty obligations. And we've done nothing but treat them as if they are optional as if our exceptionalism as the United States allows us to simply ignore those treaties. We saw George Bush do it with the Geneva Convention, and we certainly saw it with the Convention Against Torture, but the Convention Against Torture, as Ronald Reagan pointed out, after the Senate, United States Senate ratified the Convention Against Torture, 
Every signatory, including the United States, has an absolute obligation to prosecute those responsible for torture as they prosecute all other serious offenses. Every single day that isn't done by President Obama, he is in violation of the Convention Against Torture. And the most important issue in terms of the long-term impacts on the greatest number of people, an absolute tragedy in the making, is the climate crisis. And our nation, although scientists are, every science academy in the world agrees that this is a huge problem with horrendous consequences, our government continues to abdicate its highest responsibility to provide international leadership on the climate crisis. And the most tragic part of this is the window of opportunity was very, very small the last 10 years to do anything about it to save our children and later generations from experiencing the most catastrophic consequences of climate change. And we still fell under Barack Obama, who promised to do otherwise. We still fell to provide that essential leadership internationally. And the consequences will be horrendous. Later generations will look back and ask, what in the world were the American people thinking to allow these people to continue to violate their responsibilities and to continue drilling and caving into the fossil fuel industry the way our federal government, both Republicans and Democrats, are doing. Debate moderator Bob Schieffer.